One cylinder head. As you saw in the last video, here, we took this off because we were smoking. During taking it off, I did find that the, the, the air intake manifold has got quite a significant amount of oil in it. So it's quite likely that we didn't need to take this off at all. But given the trip that we've got coming, we deem it necessary just to check it over anyway. So we're going to just check over all the uh, hot plugs. We're going to do the glow plugs, head, head gasket, check the cylinders, because we've put some diesel in the cylinders just to see if, if it holds, if it does all well and good, if it goes through the cylinders, through the rings, we think there's an issue with the rings. I have just checked because it's been there for about a week now and we have lost a lot of diesel so it is quite it is potential that we are going to have to do the rings potentially rebore which I don't want to do because we've just put the engine in and I've just built the entire bloody thing back up so I'm going to get a micrometer I don't own one yet so I'm going to have to order one uh, so in the next video we will be doing a test on the bores to see if we do need a, a rebore or if we can get away with just replacing the rings Fingers crossed we can just do the rings. I did drive it as it is now, and it does seem to drive nicely. It's just the oil that's made me take the head off, so it could be a case of we just put the rings in. We will let you know. But for now, we're just going to go through the cylinder head, the checks I would normally do. Uh, I'm going to give it a bit of a clean up, replace the valve seals, reseat the valves, um, and just generally try and clear some of the uh, carbon off it. So let's get to it. You see the rings, so you've got your intake and exhaust valves all the way through. Push, push rods go through here for your rockers on the top that we took off. Enter a picture in picture here so you can see what I'm talking about. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to try and tidy it up a bit while taking this gasket off all the way across here, the manifold gasket. I'm going to try and remove the remaining bit of gasket here and then the rocker gasket on top. We'll go from there, we've taken the valves out, etc. Um, look at the seals, looking if there's any damage on here with the hot plugs. When removing gaskets like this, it's important that you never use power tools, hand tools only, because you could damage the head. So now, we've cleaned off all the gasket underneath and the, and the uh, manifold gasket. We've not done the top yet because we'd be easier when the, uh, the valves are out. So this is a, a valve remover. That hole uh, sits on top of your valve and it pushes the outer diameter um, washer, if you like, it presses on that. It's like a cone in there, but it's two halves. So when you press this down, you can remove the two halves, and then you wind it, wind the pressure back off again, and then the spring and the cap comes off, and then you can release, uh, remove your valve from the bottom. So that's what we're going to do now. We just build this up. So you can set the depth of your head. So taking into account the worktop itself and the head, that's what you're going for. That's what you're setting up with this. So if you've not seen one before, that's what it's about. So you can wind him in. Bring that back to its maximum. And you just wanna be able to put it on there. So you want to be able to do that at its minimum. Just zoom you in a bit. So you do want a bit of play as a minimum, because then you can take it off without having to mess around with the bottom all the time. And when you put it on, you're just winding it down, and then it'll grip. So you've just got to try and keep it central. We'll do this one first, it's already on there. You usually start from the end, but that's what we'll do. So with this hand, I'm just keeping it centralised. Let this go against the worktop, it'll, it'll be better for you. And then we're just going to wind him on. So 
So inside there you've got your comb that I was telling you about. And I'll just get a little tool here and poke it out. You see how it's just split? So what you need to do is you need to carefully remove that. You see the um, the ribs inside that. It corresponds with on the valve itself. It's just like a set of teeth for it to grip to. Because these valves do come under immense pressure. So now we've just took the collet out. We just gently, just being being careful to keep it in position. It's winding back off again. So we're anti-clockwise, allowing the spring and the cap to come back up. And because you've set it up the way you have, you'll have this gap now, which allows you just to take the pressure off completely and take it off. We've got two springs. I don't think you can see it that well. But there are two springs there. And there's your cap. And you just sits in there like that with your valve sits in sits in there and comes out the top that's all it is if you look through the hole you see there is a taper to it which accommodates the collet we just took out so what I'm going to do is we want to put these back on the same place you removed them from you see how the valve now is loose if we lift the head up we can drop it out the bottom and then inside here I'll show you in a second we've got the, uh, the valve seals but we'll get to that in a second So there we go, we've got all springs out, collets out, and caps. So what we're going to do now, is I'm just going to put a hole in these, cable tie these to it in the order that they are, with the rear of the engine and so on, so we know exactly where everything came from. We're going to do the same with the valves as we did with the push rods, so we know exactly where it's going when it comes back, so we're not messing anything up. Valve seals. These ones don't feel too bad actually. I've had a. Uh, see how they've still got a bit of uh, squish in them. Well, a lot of squish in these actually. So they might not have been done that long ago. Whereas the uh, the ones I did in the two and a quarter diesel engine were absolutely gone. Most people are having a nice beer or a glass of wine at nine o'clock, uh, seven o'clock on a Saturday night. But there's me drinking Vimto. Chin chin. Right, so we've got everything off now. So the head is barring the water head, which we've already gone over. Um, it's pretty much stripped. And so what we're going to do now is we're just going to check everything over. I'll do that with you. And we'll just see if there's any issues with the head. If there's not, then we'll continue with the, the valve grinding, re well, reseating. And then uh, put the valves back in, if we can get to that point. So, um, let's have a look. So what I usually look for is cracks around the valve seats. Any chunks out of them, you know, or any large carbon build-ups. But up to now, everything looks okay. So that's... There's no cracks in the cylinder, you know, I say the cylinder area, the combustion area. I don't know if you're aware, but these rings are where the piston comes up and uh, 
combusts the fuel and air mixture before being pushed back down again. Same with the end one, gives the front piston one, cylinder one. So that's okay. And now we've got the hot plugs. So to give any kind of accurate explanation as to what a hot plug is, I had to create this really crude drawing so you can have to bear with. This is a hot plug, or a pre-combustion chamber, and it lives here. And just to help you visualise, this is the air intake valve, this is the glow plug, and this is the injector. To every one rotation of this engine there are four strokes. They are suck, squeeze, bang and blow. Other than sounding like a cracking night with the missus, they are imperative for a functioning engine. As the piston moves up and down in the cylinder, it sucks air in through the intake valve. The inducted air enters into the cylinder and the hot plug where it is heated up by the glow plug and mixed with fuel from the injector. Under extreme pressure and heat, diesel will explode and force the piston downwards. This completes the third motion of the four. Once the diesel and air mixture has been burned are. off, the fourth stroke, and the rule of thumb is all products of combustion in the form of smoke. If you see a the crack in it, which you can see, you can just see one um, there. You can see a crack in it, and you can get your thumbnail in it. Then uh, you punch this out from the top, and you replace it with another one. However, I mean these are slightly cracked, but they're not. Um, they're not what I'd say are buggered. So I think I'll leave these. We're going to reseat the valves. And you've got to do that one by one. You've got to do each valve in each where it came from. You can't just do one valve in all of them. You have to do them all because it grinds to the seat. So let's do that. You can order a kit online, which is where I got this from. Uh, Amazon, I think I got it off couple of quid you get a, a stick which is effectively just what it is it's a stick with two suction cups on so these suction cups are applied to your valves I get my uh, first valve out which is that one I was in yon so as I said original front of engine we know this is the front of the engine because of the the water head so this is valve one. So what we're going to do is we're going to wet the end of this with a bit of mouth lube and then we're going to push them on through so it sticks to your valve like this. That's what you want. You can see it's... So then you, you can do that, you can feel it's really sticky. So the idea is you stick it on there proper and you want to go, you start off with your course so your course is your um, grinding paste, really. It's uh, like a more abrasive version of the two. And you can see it looks like it's got sand in it. What you do with that is pull your valve out. You get a bit of him in him. You don't want to go too much. And what you do then is you push your valve back in carefully. Yeah, the, the grind is real. And the noise changes over time. We'll get that back in there. It gets to a point where the valve gets really slippy. And just give it a bit of a, a bit of a wipe. And just give the valve a, a wipe down as well. And what we want to see is a shiny surface in there. And then also on the valve. And then we know it's nice and clean. And it's seated. There is a way of cheating as well. You can put this in a drill which is not a, if you do do it don't do it fast because you can overheat the valve and you can you can potentially damage it well mind you having said that it goes in an engine which is on fire so who knows I just advise you to take your time with it anyway but that's what I'm gonna do Um, and that took some bloody time. 
Let me just quickly show you. If you look at the valve, you can see how nice and smooth it is. And the same with the same with the um, valve seat as well. See, it's nice and flat. Well, not flat, but nice and clean. And it's a nice, satisfying click when it goes back in. We've done that all the way around, all the way through the head. So now we should have no pass on these valves. So when it's all running, it should be nice and sealed in there, in the combustion chamber. Only when it says it's opening, it should it open. So now it's a case of putting the seals back on, with the new seals on, putting the spring caps back on, and then that's it for today. There are differences in these valve seals. So I don't know if you can see there, but one, so this one, is wider than this one. So 7.8. Eight point five. So the wider bore one goes on the exhaust valves. So one on the exhaust valve. And then you can go with the top bolt on there. So what you do with these now is you just push them on. Push from the top. And they'll see it themselves. A nice little satisfying click. Like that. Like that. And like that. Like a glove. If you haven't got a Vern, Vernia, they're called, but I call it Vern. Plus, it's about the size of Mr. Troyer. Bless him. Uh, you, you should get yourself one. They are invaluable. So, we're just going to get these done first, and then we'll do these two valves that I'm going to have to put back in because I moved it and they fell out. So, let's get these retained and then we'll be uh, hot to trot. We've done all the valve seats, the valve seals, we've inspected the head, we've inspected the hot plugs. Now it's a case of we're just going to have to wait till we decide what we're doing with the engine, be it rebore or piston rings, and then when that's done we'll put the head back on. So tune in for that if you're interested. Cheers for watching. See you.